Pascal students, and a warm welcome to our distinguished guest, Dr. Basil Lui, founding partner of August Global Partners and former managing partner at EDBI. We're privileged to have Dr. Lui, whose extensive experience and expertise in emerging technologies have played a pivotal role in shaping Singapore's global innovation landscape. So welcome, Dr. Basil Lui. So let's commence to our conversation with the first topic, which is on the drive towards digitalization and deep tech. Dr. Lui, your influential contributions at EDVI span a myriad of sectors including mobility, advanced manufacturing, future computing, blockchain, AR, agri-food tech, and healthcare biotech. Could you kindly elaborate on how EDVI navigates the challenges of investing in deep tech and emerging sectors? How do you prioritize investments in such diverse fields? And what criteria guides your decision-making process? Okay, first of all, um, th thanks for inviting me to this uh, podcast. And um, yeah, it's, it's a very good initiative, this uh, PASCO project. Uh, kudos to you for putting this together. Um, yeah, a bit of background. Um, EDBI actually stands for the investment arm of the Economic Development Board of Singapore. Hence, you know, EDB and then I is the investment. So EDBI for short. Um, it was established about 15 years ago. And uh, prior to that, uh, EDB, the parent organization, um, always used tax incentives uh, to attract the big boys to Singapore. But about 15 years ago, by the way, EDB was established more than 50 years ago, 5-0, right? Uh, EDBI's establishment was about 15, and that was really to move up the value chain um, because uh, a lot of other countries were kind of mimicking what EDB does and offering tax incentives to also attract the big boys. Um, so in order to up our game, uh, EDBI was uh, created to invest into upcoming startups. So uh, instead of using tax incentives, uh, startups tend not to be profitable yet. So um, we take a bet on them, an equity stake, give them some money in exchange for an equity stake, and then um, the relevant ones that can actually uh, add to the capabilities that the whole of Singapore is looking for uh, would be you know, um, targeted. In answer to your question, um, how, how do we prioritize uh, the, the types of startups, that, the deep tech startups that we invest in? Is uh, really um, for EDBI, our job is to talk to all the different government agencies and ask them about their technology roadmap their technology wish list, what kind of capabilities uh, to, to bring into Singapore. So, uh, for instance, uh, when we spoke to the Ministry of Transport, the Land Transport Authority, there was a lot of talk about uh, looking to driverless cars, right? So, so out we went globally looking for relevant uh, driver, driverless cars uh, startups to invest in. Um, of course, the prerequisite is that they, they, uh, you know, they have to be keen to set up a Singapore presence, you know, like, like a R&D presence, for example, because that's the capability building that we're looking for. So um, just to give you an example, uh, EDBI, in 2016, we invested in this uh, company called Newtonomy. It was a Boston HQ. They were working on autonomous uh, driving. What attracted us to them was uh, two of their scientists. One of them actually was an advisor to the Mars rover. So obviously when a Mars rover lands on Mars, it has to be fully autonomous, right? Because the speed of light, the, the, the signal takes about 20 minutes. So it has to be fully autonomous. Then they decided to uh, translate that technology for earthbound cars, you know. So, so we thought, that's not bad. Uh, maybe we should take a deeper look. And then they committed to having significant R&D done in Singapore. Actually, um, the Singapore MIT Alliance for Research and Technology, S-M-A-R-T, SMART, um, one of their professors was actually seconded to SMART in Singapore. So he was already teaching a lot of uh, uh, students on autonomous driving uh, technologies. And uh, so, so yeah, the com commitment was to actually have a fully owned subsidiary in Singapore and to actually, uh, you know, uh, work on autonomous driving in Singapore. So, so we invested in them because they had a very strong Singapore angle. And, and fast forward to the present, uh, Newtonomy was uh, acquired by um, a company called Aptiv and then um, Aptiv entered into a joint venture with Hyundai, right? And then the joint venture is now called Motional. 
Uh, Motional is obviously headquartered in Boston, uh, but guess what? The R and D remains in Singapore because it it had the uh, elements of the Newtonomy R and D staff, mostly Singaporeans. Um, so so Motional's uh, R and D is is uh, in Singapore. And if you read the news recently, only as uh, two, three days ago, there was a big announcement about Hyundai setting up an advanced um, manufacturing center to manufacture electric vehicles and smart cars. If you dig deeper, uh, it is also leveraging on Motional's R&D, which then I believe is also leveraging on ultimately uh, EDBI's investment into new autonomy in 2016. And we put a very small check, but this is what we want to see, a very long tail knock-on effect that is beneficial for Singapore. So for very small check size, we have attracted all the necessary capabilities so that for the first time in history, I believe Singapore is literally manufacturing smart cars, right? A tiny little country where it was never known to be a manufacturer of cars. It always, when you talk about manufacturer of cars, it tends to be Japan and the US, right? the Toyotas of the world, the Fords of the world, um, but you never hear of Singapore manufacturing cars. So just only last week, very proud to, to say that Singapore is finally manufacturing smart cars and uh, the future of autonom uh, you know, um, autonomous cars uh, to be exported globally. So very soon you'll see a Hyundai uh, Ioniq 5 uh, car uh, with the auto autonomous uh, um, technology um, born out of Singapore or so spun out of Singapore um, plying the roads uh, in the United States and eventually Singapore, right? So that, that's great. So that's how we, it's a very long story, but I just want to you know, uh, drive home the point that it's, it's all very targeted when we speak to the various uh, government agencies. Uh, another government agency that we speak to is uh, Singapore Food Agency. So that one, uh, I can elaborate later, but uh, the, the whole um, strategy is to keep the conversation going with various government agencies. Um, the Energy Markets Authority also, you know, what kind of uh, new types of energy uh, that Singapore requires. I'll touch on that later. Um, so everything must be relevant to Singapore you know, when it comes to bringing deep tech capabilities to Singapore. So that's how we prioritize things. Things that uh, can make a lot of financial gain but don't have a Singapore angle, we'll deprioritize it. We, in fact, we won't do. Uh, which also explains why we set up a commercial arm called August Global Partners to cover longer term bets that don't have an immediate Singapore angle yet, but we feel that we'll eventually have one. So the commercial arm can go ahead and you know, take a look first cultivate it to an extent where eventually there's a Singapore angle and then that's when uh, the, the whole region will benefit, not just Singapore. Yeah. So thank you for sharing on how you prioritize investment such that you can perhaps like have a greater Singapore benefit and angle as you have mentioned um, through the entire like, um, discussion. And it was very insightful to see how EDI actually works to promote this kind of um, uh, Singapore uh, like benefit for the region as well. The share insights into the challenges and opportunities and concept in driving early stage deep tech investments. Ah, yes, yes. So, um, yes, if, if you run a commercial fund, it has a fun life. So then that's when the numbers really matter. It means the, the, by right, the startup should be profitable, but not many startups are profitable, right? That's why they're called startups. So uh, fortunately, uh, EDBI is a strategic mandate kind of fund. Strategic mandate means, um, yes, uh, there are financial objectives, but it's more of a patient capital. Uh, we don't really have a fun life uh, for EDBI. So we, we can take longer term bets. And so that allows EDBI to invest into uh, deep tech startups. Um, because uh, we, we all recognize that it does take a longer gestation period. Yeah, so th that's the, um, the overarching uh, idea of, of, of uh, having a strategic fund uh, because uh, that's when um, the dual mandate uh, so of course one is financial but the other one would be the developmental mandate which means uh, re relevant innovative uh, technological capabilities that Singapore wants to see. Yeah.